Hello, my name is Simon Didcot and I'm the CEO of a company called OBS Medical Limited. We are based in the United Kingdom and were spun out of Oxfordshire University about 15 years ago. Today I'm going to be talking to you about proactive healthcare and the use of real-time artificial intelligence in order to improve patient outcomes. With AI capabilities, smart patient monitoring can automate manual vital sign collection and proactively detect patient deterioration. Continuous data collection provides clinicians with a high resolution of patients' vitals and equips them with powerful trends to detect adverse events. Captured in near real time, this can make clinician handoffs easier and more efficient. By implementing such solutions, this influx of clinical data can be converted to actionable insights, empowering clinicians to intervene and make best care decisions for their patients. These devices can also adapt to specific patients' populations' monitoring needs. Using neural networks, this powerful type of monitoring technology is able to perform on incomplete and noisy data sets, critical due to the nature of most patient data. In addition, it has the ability to learn from each patient, thus continuously improving its predictive capabilities. Today I will discuss one such technology, Vicencia. Vicencia's artificial intelligence has been developed especially for the advanced and early detection of patient deterioration and is the next level of intelligent clinical decision support for real-time predictive analytics. Vicencia works by comparing the patient's vital signs, heart rate, respiration rate, blood oxygen, temperature and blood pressure to a large unique training database. These data are organised as a correlated set of data, not multiple, multiple independent measurements. The comparison permits Vicencia to spot patterns of instability based on real world patient data. Patterns that in some instances cannot be picked up by single channel alarm systems or overstretched nursing staff. Current monitoring devices alarm any time vitals fall slightly out of range, flooding clinicians with a constant false alarming. Much like the boy who cried wolf story, this approach compromises care. Levering technology and investing in proactive care solutions, such as smart patient monitoring, clinicians are able to make informed decisions and prioritise patient and administer care to those who need it sooner. Track and trigger systems are formal processes that rely on periodic measurements and predetermined action when certain thresholds are reached. There are many different track and trigger systems in use nationally and internationally, and they vary in the parameters that are included and the level of abnormality that triggers responses. The most simplistic of all these is a single channel alarm, which generates an alarm when a vital sign passes a predetermined threshold. Next, we have the aggregated track and trigger systems, such as MUSE and NEWS. These trigger graded responses and are also sometimes referred to as decision trees. Then we have the electronic version of the aggregated weighted track and trigger systems, such as MUSE and NEWS. These are fundamentally exactly the same as the paper-based versions, except for that they are automated. And finally, we have the AI approach, which uses data collected from a representative population to enhance the sensitivity and specificity of detecting abnormality. Single parameter alarm systems require high level of expertise to identify signs of deterioration, looking at individual vital sign trends and their correlation with other vital signs. The sensitivity is typically poor and there is a high rate of false alarms. Often the ranges are set too wide to avoid this number of false alarms. 86% of a total of 2,942 alarms were found to be false positive alarms. Only 8% of all alarms tracked during the study period were determined to be true alarms with clinical significance. This failure to accurately recognise deterioration has led to the phenomenon of alarm fatigue. The graph below shows four vital signs which were continuously monitored. A single channel alarm was triggered for blood pressure and continued to alert throughout the patient's monitoring session. 
The other three vital signs had the odd alarm, but otherwise stayed within threshold range. The patient was rushed to ICU after there was a shift changed and a more experienced clinician reviewed the trend data and recognised the patterns were abnormal. If we overlay the Vicencia output onto this screen, we can clearly see the system alerting 10 hours before the ICU admission. All vital signs have been taken into consideration when compared to the Vicencia dataset. This would have enabled proactive care to intervene sooner and to stabilise the patient before the need for the unplanned ICU visit. The current challenge is having experienced clinicians review this data at all times and able to spot the signs of instability. This is where AI can help identify that needle in the haystack and allow you to prioritise accordingly. Aggregated weighted track and trigger systems like the Modified Early Warning Score are designed to be simple and easy to use. They were originally based on paper-based calculations and as such rely on simple calculations between the variables. They were created by expert opinion and sensitivity is overly shown to be poor. One study showed that 45.3% of patients who suffered cardiac arrest were still in the low MUSE group. Vicencia is a data-driven technique which estimates the probability that the current monitored patient's data are the same as the data recorded from a group of typically high-risk patients. As the Vicencia index represents a probability, the percentage of time a monitored group of patients will trigger an alert can be estimated. As a result, the expected call-out rate for the emergency or outreach team can be determined in advance. A typical example of the aggregated weighted track and trigger system is the modified early warning score, which adds an integer score to each vital sign, usually from 0 to 3, where 0 is normal and 3 is severe, and adds up the scores. Since this is simply a weighted sum, the variables are treated as if they were independent, not correlated. If the scores assigned were continuous, the decision boundary for raising an alert would be a diamond shape, as opposed to an ellipse. Again, this is not a true representation of the underlying data. In fact, MUSE is somewhat worse than this in that the scores are coarsely discretized of integers, where each integer covers a range of values for the vital sign. So the decision boundary would not even be a diamond shape, but will resemble a staircase leading to many false alerts. Vicencia was developed using thousands of hours of continuous vital sign data from high-risk patients. This included patients with severe heart failure, acute respiratory problems, hip fractures and myocardial events. From this data, the Vicencia model of normality was created. Using this model, we can determine the probability that any new set of vital signs are normal for high-risk patients. In the diagram to the right, we can see a plot of two variables, heart rate and blood pressure. Each of the black dots on the graph represents a pair of reading of blood pressure and heart rate that were taken at the same time in a clinical observation. Notice that around the centre of the distribution, there is a high density of such points, indicating that this kind of combination occurs relatively frequently and represents a normal state of patient for these two readings. On the other hand, the regions of the graph where there is a low density of data points indicate an abnormal reading, indicative of an abnormal condition that might trigger an alert from the system. The curves and histograms either side of the three-dimensional plot show the distribution of the single variables and of the familiar bell-shaped Gaussian curves known as the normal distributions. The Vicencia score increases as the data density is lowered. Due to the vast amount of data that went into the Vicencia training set, it is not efficient to store all of the training data and to calculate the data density at each time the index is calculated. So the data density is modelled by a probability density function, which is a mathematical model with fewer parameters than storing all the training data. The particular model that we use is called the Pars and Window model, which is a type of kernel density estimation. The green ellipse in the other graph represents a threshold where the density modelled by this mathematical model falls below a specific threshold. This corresponds equally with a novelty exceeding a threshold and triggering an alert. In general, the boundary would have been the form of an ellipse. Notice that the ellipse is skewed about the x and y axis. The Vicencia model thus captures the correlation between variables. In this case, that blood pressure will be expected to increase with heart rate. 
In summary, both single channel alerting systems and aggregated weighted track and trigger systems such as MUSE are equivalent to a poor approximation to the true decision boundary, which is derived from a proper probability density model like Vicencia, which takes into account the actual distribution of the data. The Vicencia model is derived from actual clinical data and thus re represents a superior model because the VAT signs are not coarsely discretized as with the MUSE and other track and trigger systems. And it also takes into account the fact that the variables are correlated and not independent of each other. Finally, the true decision boundary for an abnormality is generally ellipse shaped. This graph overlays Vicencia alongside the equivalent MUSE calculations for the same data set. Vicencia is shown in the smooth line and MUSE is shown in the more bar graph type line on the same graph at the top on the left hand side. The graph nicely contrasts the difference between an aggregated weighted track and system, system like MUSE and Vicencia. The smooth movement of Vicencia index is shown contrasted to the fluctuating MUSE graph. The MUSE value depends on which measurements are taken. Dramatic changes in MUSE are seen for measurements that are minutes apart. This fluctuating score represents many false and missed alarms. Vicencia provides a much more robust continuous scoring output to a leading to a higher sensitivity and specificity. We have a patient who had their SpO2 and heart rate and derived respiration rate monitored for a period of time. In addition, the patient had supplementary blood pressure and temperature readings every two hours. A serious limitation of all aggregated weighted track and trigger systems like MUSE is that it is a manual measurement system which was intended for periodic measurements. What this means in practice is that when we have periodic measurements, rather than the specificity, it is the sensitivity that is low. We have observed, as illustrated here, that episodes of Vicencia alerting can be brief but can be precursors to longer periods. Because of the body's control mechanisms, the earliest of such episodes could be as short as five minutes. If manual observations for MUSE are made every four hours and the episode is at a random time, then the chance of missing the episode is 97.9%. In this particular study, the nurses were following standard protocol of aggregated weighted track and trigger and they were blinded to, to Vicencia. The advanced nurse practitioners had access to Vicencia and intervened, resulting in, in, resulting in admission to ICU. The aggregated weighted track and trigger system did not highlight any cause for concern. Together, these results highlight why the aggregated weighted track and trigger system in use with periodic measurements is fundamentally flawed for de detecting patient deterioration. Electronic aggregated weighted track and trigger systems were an obvious advancement of the technology. Rather than paper and pen based manual calculations, these systems simply calculate the predetermined MUSE and NEWS scores electronically based on data capture. They help address some known issues with paper based systems, namely calculation errors and protocol compliance and a delay in the physician notification. Fundamentally, however, they still fail to address the major issues with these type of systems in that they have been generated using expert clinical opinion and the cutoffs between the variables do not reflect accurate risk stratification. They are still designed for periodic measurements so sensitivity and specificity is compromised if used in a continuous fashion. In order to deploy a system such as Vicencia, an ecosystem is required. This consists of medical devices used to capture patient data. Typically, these can be either wearables, telemetry, typical bedside monitors, EOBs, or home monitoring wearables. This data is fed across the hospital network in HL7 to the Vicencia application, which runs on a server. The Vicencia application makes its system available as a series of dashboards which can be presented to nurse central stations, outreach and rapid response teams or virtual wards. These dashboards can be used to monitor patients regardless of location and used 
the Vicencia Index to make key clinical decisions on the patient's well-being and their proactive care. The health economic benefits of a system like Vicencia have been well studied. These studies show on average a six hour advanced early warning of patient deterioration when a patient is continuously monitored with the Vicencia system. This helps reduce patient instability, in some instances reducing 60, up to 60% of the duration where patients were critically unstable. It also minimises the effects of alarm fatigue, where 95% of Vicencia alerts were considered to be true alerts. It reduces unexpected events with a 34.5% redu reduction in mortality rates. Finally, I'd like to explore some of the other benefits that OBS Medical can bring to the predictive analytic market. Vicencia is often considered by many to be the grandfather of the predictive analytic, being the first in the world to obtain both FDA and CE mark accreditation. These accreditations, as well as OBS's long 20 year history, help ensure that it's considered the authority in the field of produ predictive analytics. However, of course, we are aware that across the world there are many people that are working on similar technologies to, to, such as Vicencia, but perhaps do not quite know how to take them to the mass market in the same way that we have. Through our Touchstone program, we are able to help other algorithm vendors host their algorithm on our virtual monitoring platform, as well as improve their algorithm using Vicencia as perhaps another input into their existing models. These hybrid algorithms can be taken to the market through the CE Mark and FDA process in the same way that Vicencia has, using OBS's experience. This can help turn what is potentially a great idea into an actual product that can be used by clinicians and nurses in order to really improve patient care. AI is ushering a new era in healthcare, bringing about significant changes from the way doctors are trained to how they make decisions and deliver care. By empowering physicians with these new transformative smart monitoring tools, man and machine together will be able to shift care from reactive to proactive, a feat neither can achieve alone. Thank you.